Hey guys, this is Jacob here. In this video I'd like to show you my 500 FE budget build for Time Mark 8 maps on Serena, Icebound Beam. Um, to make it budget, like most of the people nowadays you will see using this support, which is not cheap. But if you can get it, then it is better than the one that uh, than the one that I'm using in this version of the build. But once you get enough FEs, this is definitely an upgrade because this one can shotgun, while the other one helps you with clear but cannot shotgun single target. So yeah, uh, the other one is this Icebound Beam Chin and Spike. So those are these spikes flying out from me the yeah uh, the damage of the build in farming setup with with drop pack spirits right now is around 1.92 billion 1.5 like yeah you can see it here so that's enough to clear uh time mark 8 maps definitely uh so i will show it in the end of the video but let's go through the gear first since i was looking for things to make it 500 fe budget uh this helmet is actually better than the than the other one that is that's hp based and gives you wind projectiles this one gives you 20 or 30 percent additional damage to cursed enemies and we are cursing everything through uh, our like circle of curse here is so 30% additional damage and it also gives you a lot of survivability through erosion resistance and uh, minus 20% additional damage taken from curse enemies uh, this version of the helmet with the corrupt will cost you around 20 FEs so that's that's even cheaper than the other helmet that I've been using in the previous video so that's that but you can only use one curse which is not an issue because we don't have access to two curses right now uh anyway but we will have two curses two, two curses later that's the topic for the next video or the one after that so helmet 20 fe amulet try to get this one with like two intelligence mods that should go around 40 FEs let's say if you can get better you can get free intelligence uh, rolls and if you want something crazy then you can get free intelligent nodes and corrupt with another plus percent all stats that would be the best case you can get from this amulet actually but yeah 40 FE so that's 60 for helmet and amulet then you want to get this ring this ring finally is getting cheap so you want one with with free minimum uh, channel stacks it's right now is going for around 40 fe's really cheap now it was thousand at the beginning of the season so right now it is getting really cheap um and the rest of the gear is the same as i had in the previous video so uh, tier 2 belt, oh, I have actually crafted a weapon but that I will show it as last, so uh, tier 2 belt, max energy shield, intelligence where, wherever you can get it, damage, resistances, gloves, energy shield, uh, damage, intelligence, resistances, boots, movement speed, energy shield, intelligence and resistances, and uh, rare ring, again tier 2 energy shield intelligence damage and resistances and i've managed to dreamcraft a little bit of movement speed and reduction to energy shield yeah whatever it's a dreamcraft you can remove it you can have it there makes me a little bit faster in maps but the downside is probably not worth the 11 percent so yeah for the armor that one costs like five fe's gives you a lot of energy shield so try to get one with higher ro ro roll on the energy shield thingy and it will provide you with a lot of yes and for the weapon i have 
crafted it myself. You can buy a weapon like this for around 500 FEs, but you should be able to craft it yourself for around 200, so that's what I count here. So around 200, 250 for a weapon. Tier 1, focus on plus 4 main skill, intelligence, cold damage, spell damage, cast speed and elemental damage. So that's for the weapon. Try to cap your resistances, true gear, true passive points. Yeah. Uh, now that was gear. Now let's check uh, passive tree actually first. Talent trees. So goddess of knowledge with chili to generate focus blessings. And uh, insight for additional spell damage. If you feel like you are getting too slow in like cold region maps or cold damage maps, you can go with burning touch. You will be a little bit faster. You will lose 10% damage, but you will be immune to frostbite. So you will go through cold region maps uh, faster. That's the option here. And the goddess of knowledge tree looks like this. There's pretty much nothing to change here. Uh, the only thing that you might be thinking of changing is removing this. But uh, that's like 6 points for 8% additional damage. And like some plus gold damage here. But those 8% additional damage actually stacks up on top of other additional damage modifiers. So that's really a lot of damage that you would be losing in the long run. Maybe not right now because the, the build does not have that high amounts of damage, but later on this 8% multiplier is a big deal actually. So that's that. Second tree, Elementalist. Uh, in here, uh, since I have the ring with plus 3 minimum channel stacks, I can get rid of quick ritual and I can pick Peculiar Vibe, and since I'm not stuck in Focus Blessings yet, uh, I'm not using Penetrating, but if you have uh, Focus Blessings, at least uh, 7, Penetrating would be better than Peculiar Vibe with 7 Blessings. I have 6, so that's still 1% uh, worse uh, than Peculiar Vibe, so I'm using Peculiar Vibe here. If you already are stuck in Focus Blessings, Penetrating is definitely better choice here and for warlock ah oh, okay uh, elementalist the tree looks like this the build is already energy shield based so instead of taking damage here i'm taking more energy shield to be to have more energy shield to survive better cast speed helps you with addition of damage and also skill costs uh, critical strike rating, really important stat, gives you a lot of damage because we don't have that much critical strike rating on other like um, sources. Uh, damage penetration, elemental elemental resistance penetration and uh, like another elemental resistance penetration per element. And we have like two elements or three in this version, in this 500 FE version. So yeah, that's some penetration right there. Then elemental resistance is here and reduced elemental damage taken helps you with survivability if you are getting multiple hits from different like on ground effects and this helps you. Stuck in intelligence so definitely take these. We are, get, we are trying to get as much intelligence as possible because every point of intelligence gives you 0.5% additional damage. And then this one is really important because through Chili we are getting focus blessings pretty much all the time because that's on hit. And with this node here we are also generating tenacity and agility blessings for free. So that's more survivability and or attack speed, cast speed and additional damage. We have 4 so that's 8% additional damage from this. And then this for plus one cold skill. And this helps us with uh, some 
uh, elemental ailments, which we wouldn't be able to do, like lightning damage helps us with inflicting numbed, they call it numbed this season, so that's the lightning elemental ailment. For the large notes, <coughs> translucent uh, gives you 20% additional cold damage if you dealt lightning damage recently, so that's also what this little node here allows us to use, because we are doing lightning damage all the time, so this translucent node is up all the time. If you really struggle with survivability and you have enough damage, like you might have different pieces in the gear, then adaptation would help you a lot with survivability, because that gives you maximum element resistance, which is huge, and I've, I've uh, like described how resistances work in one of my previous videos, and also would give you like physical damage reduction, which is also really important. But yeah, for more damage, just use translucent if you have enough damage, swap to adaptation, be good to go. Uh, the second note would be, uh, if you have the... Wait a minute. I already like I already explained this right <laughs> so let's skip that one okay let's go to warlock warlock uh, would be more energy shield don't need the damage right now uh, so energy shield more cast speed some critical rating again important notes because we don't have many sources of critical strike rating then at least some source of energy shield again helps you with survivability a lot when you don't get one shot. Then cooldown recovery and plus max charge helps you with mobility, helps you with uh, like the damage increase in skills because we are stuck in specific support gem link that scales from maximum charges so that helps there and the 10% cooldown recovery speed is also very nice. Because it lets us uh, use our mobility skill faster mainly. Then these two nodes here are really important. Energy shield charge cannot be interrupted by damage for one second after it starts. So that's pretty much gives you one second of guaranteed energy shield recharge whenever your energy shield recharge starts. I've talked about the energy shield recharge in one of my previous videos. So check that if you missed it. Then plus one skills. That's what. That's why we are actually, actually like choosing this tree. That's like plus three skills from this tree only. And then this more damage. And this is like preparation for the next step in the build, which will give us more damage per element. But it already gives us 20, uh, like 40 percent because I'm I'm pretty sure I have like two or three elements already on this version. So. Yeah. Large passives, indifference for plus to all skills, and off the beaten track for plus four uh, support skills and uh, support skills mana multiplier is fixed at 95%. I've made an entire video about this note, check that out. This is really crazy, what this allows you to do is to run multiple 50% auras. So it's basically free, uh, like uh, sealed mana multiplier right here. For the statue of god, I have nothing special here, just plus one spell skill and two things that I use, plus 40% additional beam length that allows you to increase the range on what you are able to attack monsters with, so that helps you with quality of life while clearing the map, so additional beam length. And on this one, immediately starts energy shield charge upon entering the low energy shield status that helps you a little bit with survivability because because in combination with the warlock node that gives you one second energy shield recharge when you enter the low energy shield state this gives you one second of energy shield recharge for free pretty much without needing of using a force start skill 
to start your energy shield recharge. On the rest, I'm just focusing on critical strike rating and some resistances for now. So that's my slates. For skills, the main skill we are using is Icebound Beam, uh, linked with multiple projectiles, greater multiple projectiles, control spell, guard, and chilling spike. You don't need to use uh, the uh, refracted prism anymore if you are using this, because this provides you with clear. So you can use more damage instead, and that's what Control Spell is here for. For uh, movement skill I'm using Frigid Transmission. Why? Because Frigid Transmission cooldown resets with every uh, freeze you inflict, and you are freezing things pretty much all the time. So I'm not even using like the cooldown reduction supports on this, like Quick Mobility or cooldown reduction, because it gets reset pretty much all the time. So just magic dash to provide it with additional charge. Periodic burst to provide myself with more cast speed, which provides me with more damage. And grudge, which provides me with paralyze, that increases, increases damage taken by the target that you inflicted on by 15% that's, that's another like 15% additional damage multiplier right here with Gratch. On demand damage basically and you are able to actually keep the Paralyze on the target all the time if you like use Frigid Transmission from time to time. Our Curse of Choice Biting Cold increases uh, cold damage that the target takes. I'm linking it with Terran of Malice and increased area to make it bigger and to make it an aura around me so I don't have to cast it on targets. And I'm automating it with preparation which basically makes it like go off automatically. I don't need to think about it. It's up pretty much all the time. And uh, the same setup with preparation on Secret Origin Unleash that provides us with additional spell damage and cast speed for each stack of focus blessings. Uh, I'm having six focus blessings and later on I will be stacking focus blessings higher so this will scale up way higher. So again preparation for automation uh, to automate this skill. Well fought battle increases the effectiveness of the skill uh, while it lasts and mass effect increases the effectiveness of the skill for every charge you have basically on it. So. That's why the plus one max charge on Warlock is good here, because it provides higher effect through this mass effect node. Extended duration to make it last for the <laughs> for almost eight seconds or yeah, around that for the preparation to make it uh, like permanent pretty much. And the last Empire slot is like flex slot for everyone. I prefer to go through the map faster, like movement wise, so I'm using bloody steps for additional movement speed. Automating it with preparation with 5 second cooldown because bloody steps last for 3 seconds, but I'm extending it with extended duration for like 4 point something and it gets cast every 5 seconds, so I have it up almost all the time. And again supporting it with well fought battle and mass effect to increase its effectiveness so I'm getting like maybe 50 or 60 percent movement speed from this. Helps a lot. If you struggle with damage you can swap it for mana boil and just put preparation here if you are using mana boil and don't want to think about it or you don't even need to be put in preparation there and just tap it at the beginning of the map or whenever you die because that buff is up all the time until you like move zones or you lose all your mana basically or you die so you just pop it once you don't need to think about it anymore after that if that would still not be enough damage for your build you can get even more damage but you would get a bit slower and you can use aim 
which would provide you with 38% initial damage. And here if you link it with preparation and extended duration, it would last pretty much indefinitely. And again boosting it with well fought battle and mass effect. So with aim setup, like for bosses for example, this is still with my drop packed spirits. Once it procs, now it procced. And you can see the damage goes higher and higher. And if I had like three, three charges here after rezone, the effect of the skill would get higher and I would get around 3 billion DPS with that skill. But yeah, I prefer to go faster, so what I'm using is bloody steps and activation medium preparation with 5 seconds cooldown. <coughs> For the passive skills, precise frigid domain with restraint, aura amp and increased area of effect because why area of effect? For the first point it reduces the mana cost because the mana cost multiplier is fixed to 95% so I'm able to so I I'm able to actually like cast the aura like you can see here I would have one mana left if I did not have it here, have it there not that I need the mana but yeah uh, but also what it provides is area of effect for the skill and since frigid domain is not an, an aura that is buffing you but it is an aura that affects uh, monsters around you you want to increase its area of effect so it yeah affects more monsters more monsters in higher distance basically so yeah definitely have it there second passive skill precise elemental amplification uh, Aura Amp, Restraint and Seal Conversion, so that's the only aura I'm reserving on life and as you can see it reserves 95% of my life pretty much. So that's that. And the third aura would be Precise Precise Projectiles, I don't have the Precise Precise version yet, but that just gives you more effect. So this is at least something for now, increases projectile damage and since beam is actually a projectile skill it increases the damage of this skill as well <coughs> at least the icebound, icebound beam is a projectile skill as you can see the tag here and it shoots projectiles so it scales those for clear I, I and for uh, for a source of explode i'm using precise ice imbue which gives you uh Enemies have 20% chance to explode when defeated, dealing like secondary cold damage. This secondary cold damage I'm increasing with imbue enhancement, which removes the uh, chance to inflict frostbite from it pretty much, but it increases the damage it, it does by 115%, so that's like damage, right, for explode, and increased area to make the clear a little bit better with restrain to reduce the mana cost. For candles, you want to get one candle with minimum channel stacks. The reason is uh, you want the beam to be on five stacks like or or you want your character to, to be on five minimum stacks so the beam does not have to charge because it shoots the projectiles from it only when it, it gets to max charges. And then it starts charging again, I can show it here actually. Unequip. And as you can see, I'm for minimum ch minimum channeling stacks now, so that's like 4-5, four, 4-5, five, four, five. and you can see that it is shooting slower. If you don't have enough currency, like the, the candle is nothing pricey. Like it costs like 20, but if you don't have the 20 for now, you can simply uh, swap uh, the large notes and elementalist to quick ritual instead of peculiar vibe you would use five uh, you would lose uh, five percent damage but you would get, you would get the minimum channel in stack st stack here as you can see I'm again on five and the projectiles are just flying everywhere so yeah that's an easy quick fix if you don't have access to the candle right now 
and the second candle uh, the effect of this I'm using a stacking candle the, the effect of this you cannot see on the dummy so it does not affect damage uh, on a single target but it helps you with speed uh, in the map and I'm not counting it into the price of the build although I could because some of the pieces even got uh, cheaper from yesterday so yeah that's around 70 FE to get some usable one it helps you a lot with clear helps you a lot with uh, like getting through the map faster so if you have enough for it get it you will clear maps faster those those you will get FEs faster for more upgrades so that's for skills uh, for hero memories try to get uh, one with intelligence and then critical strike rating and something useful in the like affix here in the fixed affix I have cast speed you can get damage you can get whatever like something useful but get intelligence and critical strike rating if you can on the second one get energy shield because we are energy shield based and then try to get something useful again in the fixed affix I have max energy shield that's awesome and then as you can see again spell crit spell crit damage and in the third one uh, cast speed or movement speed would be those would be two options that I would go for and then again critical strike rating and in the fixed one something useful so that is that and that's pretty much it for this version of the build now I will show you a clear of 8.0 map because that's what this build is designed for let's go here 8.0 and let's do a quick map I'm using statue of war but you don't have to that just makes you clear the map faster pretty much but the build is fully capable of clearing the map without it as you can see even with the not like even with not the pricey support with this clear it's still enough damage to kill everything No, I get lightning it's a little bit of cheating but yeah whatever you get the idea you just go through the map clear it like the beam takes care of everything so that's the build hopefully I've explained everything if I forget something I will be doing more updates on this build as I go higher I have actually already prepared like 1000 FE version of it so that will be the next video this I hope you find these the helpful because I'm trying to explain all the mechanics for new players so I know that most of the people already know most of the things but for those who don't I'm trying to explain it yeah in depth in depth <laughs> so everyone knows how the damage scales but yeah so that's the build thanks everyone for watching hope i hope i will see you in the next video bye